Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5, and today we are going to be talking about drifting. Now, we're not going to be talking about, you know, crazy leaderboard scores or leaderboard numbers or, you know, doing massive 200 mile per hour highway slides or anything like that. We are going to be talking about the absolute basics of drifting in Horizon 5. Now, if you're new to either Horizon 5 or the Horizon series in general, you might be able to pick up some tips from this that may be useful to you in the future. Now, whether you're trying to just drift around with your friends or maybe use some of these ideas in drift zones to maybe help you get higher scores. Either way, I hope you guys are able to find something helpful from this video. Now, the car we are going to be using for this is a car that is going to be extremely accessible, right? Now, at the beginning of the game, you will have the opportunity to be given a Supra. Now, this Supra is in the exact stock tune apart from color and wheels. Nothing about the performance is altered at all. It's got the standard power that they give you. It's got the standard tires that they give you. However, there are a couple of key differences that we are going to go over that are not related to the car. Now, mainly those are related to settings. Now, you do not have to use manual with clutch in order to actually drift, but it sure does make it a lot better because you have the ability to clutch kick. Now, if we do a little bit of a lap around just this one corner, this one corner at the festival circuit, you guys will see what I'm talking about. Now, when you're first starting to practice, the biggest thing I recommend doing is one of two things. One, you can just do these little turnarounds using the handbrake. That's not really even going to be a drift, but being able to handbrake turn around the cones without hitting them is going to actually help a lot in terms of knowing where to place your car. Now, you don't have to, like I said before, you can nudge the cone a little bit, and that's fine. But what you really want to focus on is this corner down here at the end. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do a handbrake on the way in and then flick the car using the momentum around the other side and we are just flat on the throttle using the steering to control the slide all the way through the corner. Now, you can do it that way or if you would rather ease into the drift a little bit, you know, a little bit more slowly, you don't have to necessarily flick the car around. You can turn in and then get into the power and then just stay in it throughout the rest of the corner and then follow through with counter steer. Now, the second approach is probably what I would recommend doing in the very beginning. That way, you can practice getting into the slide as well as pulling the car out of the slide. Now, for a lot of people, usually the trickiest part is pulling the car out of the slide, and they either don't give it enough throttle and they push, or they give it too much and they spin out. So, for example, if you don't counter steer, this will happen immediately. You'll end up backwards, and that'll be that. And honestly, that may happen to you a few times while you're learning and while you're figuring it out. But the more you practice on that one specific corner over and over and over again, the more you'll figure out where the timing is and what the perfect amount of counter steer is in order to hold the slide throughout the rest of the corner. Once again, with no e-brake, just using the front brakes and a combination of throttle, Tip the wheel into the dirt a little bit there, but once again, you don't need the e-brake. Now let's talk about what the e-brake actually does. The e-brake, normally I would use it for either entries or I would use it to sometimes adjust the car in the middle of a high-speed drift. Now, one of the reasons I use manual with clutch is so that you can use the handbrake and the clutch at the same time. You will press both of them at the same time, and that way you'll be able to free rev the engine while you're holding onto the handbrake. Whereas if you grab the handbrake, by itself, you'll stall the engine out and it will have to restart and then that will break up the flow of your drift. So I'll show you guys what both of those things do in the same corner. So let's go ahead and make our way down. This is with the clutch in. You can see the car can actually free rev and when we transition, I was able to grab the handbrake again. I was running out of speed there so I grabbed it a second time just to kind of allow me to keep the drift going. Whereas if I turn around and run it the other way again, and use the handbrake without the clutch, you'll see what happens to my slide. So handbrake, no clutch, the engine stalls out, and it comes back on in time for me to catch it a little bit, but not necessarily, not necessarily in the smoothest way. So once you've got that down, practicing especially with dragging the handbrake in with the clutch in, um, after that, I would recommend starting to do some transitions. Now, the way you can work on transitions, as a matter of fact, this track has some really good areas for you to work on transitions specifically. Um, this corner right here can kind of allow you to do a tight entry into a kind of like a mid-speed exit, nothing too crazy, but you can also whip the car back around the right right here at the end and make a third transition out of it as well. 
So let's whip the car back around and point it the opposite direction. Now, if you want to practice some even tighter transitions, you can go to the mountains, but I would recommend going ahead and entering right here and then learning how to keep the momentum going, clutch kicking about midway through. Ah, we lost it. See, that's the thing is when your car doesn't have a bunch of horsepower, you do have to be very careful about your momentum because if you lose your momentum, you're, you're kind of done. So let's do a couple of drift laps around this course and I'll kind of talk you guys through what I'm doing throughout the lap itself. But before we do that, let me also go ahead and show you guys my settings just real quick. That way you guys can see what we are working with. We're working with um, ABS on. You can have it off or like on or off, whatever you want. Standard steering, traction off, obviously stability control off, obviously as well. And shifting is going to be manual with clutch. Now again, you don't have to have the clutch enabled, but it really does help the stability of the drifts, the smoothness of the drifts, and it just makes everything a lot more controllable if you do have it on. So let's do a full drift lap of this entire circuit. Now once again, it, whoa, let's go. There we go, flat out in third. Again, it's no massive power car, but you can still get some decent transitions going. Let's see if we can Start flicking it back and forth at some higher speed. You know what? I'm just going to drive that section, and then I'm going to flick it this way on the handbrake. Downshift to third, and then full throttle all the way through. A little bit of handbrake on the end. Now, in a higher-powered car, I would just continue on the slide throughout this entire section. But in this car, I mean, you can try, but it's not necessarily what I would recommend focusing on. Big handbrake entry at over 100. There we go. Run up to the outside edge of the track, then down to the inside, because I didn't want to lose my momentum. And then you can just keep these side-to-side -side transitions going for as long as you can. And as long as you keep them going, you can just you can just really drag them out as far as possible. The only thing is that when there's stuff in the way like that, uh, it can kind of get in the way of your slides. Drag the handbrake all the way in on that one. And transition back the other way. Now, a little bit sloppy on the exit there, but a full lap around this course, while obviously you can straighten out in the long straightaways, a full lap around this course with successful drifts on each corner would definitely be the goal that I would recommend. Now, another thing that you can actually use in order to work on kind of the car control element of it is to actually work on a, just basically a controlled donut. Now, actually, this corner right here is a really perfect example of a way to enter the festival stylishly. But out here in the middle of the festival is actually a really good open area that you can use to practice controlled donuts. Like, for example, if you start on this side, kick the clutch in second, and actually you can follow these lines kind of, you know, somewhat loosely, but if you can keep the car within these lines for the most part, you'll be doing pretty well when it comes to uh, actually being able to control the car in any of the other drift zones or really any area that you want to drift, just maybe to like get some video or record, like maybe take some pictures. Either way, then you can turn it into a bit of a figure eight course. And being able to turn this section of the festival into like a figure eight drift course is actually one of the coolest things that I feel like a lot of people may not have thought of to do at the festival. But if you are looking for something to do at the festival or a way to test your cars, this is actually kind of a fun way to do it. And now that we've seen what you're able to do with a completely stock base Supra that you get right from the beginning of the game, let's see what happens when we bring out one of my fully built drift cars. This is my Mark IV Supra with a fully built 2JZ, a wide body, and a bunch of work in the tune. It's not necessarily perfectly where I want it yet, but it's definitely going to be a little bit of a step up. And the cool thing about it is that if you can start to nail some of these lines with a, like in a car that's got stock steering angle, by the time you get up to a car like this, you'll be absolutely ripping all over the place. That wasn't bad actually, 53,000. Close to my record, my record is like 55.9 right now. I'm sure you can do a little bit better than that, but you know. All right, let's see what we can do around the track with the fully built super drift car. Oh, there we go. Fell out of boost. That's the biggest thing you have to worry about with this car is falling out of boost. And as long as you don't fall out of boost, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Now, the biggest difference when you go up to a car that's got, you know, drift steering knuckles and it's got like a bunch of power is obviously you're going to be able to carry on your slides for way longer and the angle is going to be way more aggressive. But this is why I always recommend learning in a, you know, in maybe a less powerful car. That way, by the time you get up to something like this, you'll be absolutely shredding. Whereas if you start in something like this, it might be a little trickier to learn the finer details. Cool, easy, 
went back down to fifth. God, it's crazy the amounts of angle that this car can hold. And not only the amounts of angle it can hold, but the amount of smoke it makes is absolutely off of the freaking charts. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and videos in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and if it helped you guys out, let me know. Uh, let me know what you tried, let me know what kind of drift cars you're probably gonna end up building really soon, and let me know how your experience went drifting the stock Supra. And also if you had any issues with any of the sections we mentioned or any of the sections we talked about, do let me know in the comment section below. But that's gonna do it for this one, guys, and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.